Okay, so in front of you here is probably the most commonly recognisable recreational piece of physics. Yes, it is indeed a plasma globe, and I can do this. And that's quite fun. And many of you in your homes or offices or physics classrooms at school, maybe, even if you're lucky, you may have one of these, and you can play around with it in the dark like this. It's quite fun, but have any of you ever wondered how it actually works? Well, in this video this evening, I intend to explain exactly that. Okay, so how does the plasma globe that I've just shown you actually work? Well, as you know, plasma globes consist of a glass sphere, and sealed inside this glass sphere, there is a noble gas at a very particular pressure. Now, noble gases are those gases which are highly unreactive uh, because they have a full outer shell of electrons and they are located in the rightermost group of the periodic table. So I have a little one here behind me and they are located along here. And it's usually going to be neon. In, in my plasma globe, it, it, it's neon. But sometimes argon and, and the heavier noble gases as well. Okay, so then in, in, in the centre of the plasma globe, there is an electrode con connected to a non-conductive part of the circuit. So what happens? When, when we switch on the plasma globe, a very high voltage is applied across the electrode. And because, because it's connected to a non-conductive part of the circuit, we essentially get an electric field between the electrode and the glass sphere on the outside of the plasma globe. So what this means, this, this causes the electrons uh, that, that are orbiting all of the atoms in, yeah, that make up neon, uh, th these electrons move around and they become f free or delocalised. And as soon as this happens, a process called ionisation occurs. Now an ion is, an, is essentially a, a, an atom with... Uh, differing numbers of, of protons and electrons, so therefore they have a charge. All right, so they are charged particles. Okay, so as soon as we have charged particles, the the, the noble gas, all right, the neon has become ionised and it becomes a conductor. In fact, it's actually changed state and it has now become a plasma. Okay. Uh, at the same time as applying uh, that that high voltage, by the way, that, that high voltage is actually b between 2 and 5 kilovolts, so 2 and 5 thousand volts, so, so it's, you know, we, we are talking about high voltage there. There's also a, a very high frequency uh, oscillating voltage, an alternating voltage, uh, a second one um, in, in the, in the centre bit of, of, of the plasma globe. Um, and this has a frequency of about 35 kilohertz, so it's oscillating around 35,000 times every second. And what, what this does, this keeps the, the, the electrons moving, the free electrons moving inside that neon. So it, it essentially keeps it charged, it keeps it ionised, and it, and it keeps it as a plasma. It maintains the plasma, hence the term plasma globe. Now, all of these electrons... They want to get to Earth, okay? They want they want to get to the Earth. So they 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 are going to uh, basically uh, journey, you know, travel up, move up to the to, to that glass sphere, and that's why when you look at at the plasma globe, uh, you you see those those filaments all, all pointing that way. Uh, obviously, when when I touch it, as, as I showed you at the beginning of this video you see one of those filaments become much more profound. Now, the, the alternating voltage that I discussed before, that causes an alternating magnetic field. And the alternating magnetic field is concentrated around me. When I press with, with my finger or hand or any part of my body on, on the plasma globe, the magnetic field is concentrated around that part of the body. The reason that that happens is because I am a lot more conductive and a lot less resistive than air. So the electrons will, would much rather travel through me, or any human being, uh, than the air in order to get to Earth. So the majority of the current will flow through me or any human being when one touches 
the plasma globe. So the the uh, magnetic field, so that alternating magnetic field, becomes concentrated around the part of the body that is touching the globe, and hence why you see that much more defined filament. Um, the most interesting part of this, in my opinion, is why do you see any light at all from, from the plasma globe? Why, why is, it, is it lighting up at all? Well, during the process of ionisation, uh, the, the electrons will become more excited. In other words, they will move up um, to a higher energy level shell. Uh, and and it, it will need to get back down to, to the lower energy shell again, the, these electrons, because it, it's a basic law of physics, every electron must be in the lowest energy level possible. So in order to do this, what happens is that the electron will emit a photon. All right, so Bohr, Niels Bohr, the famous physicist, called this a quantum leap. And any electron that, that gains energy and moves up to, uh, to a higher energy level will absorb a photon. And any, any electron that does, goes back the other way, will move back down to a low energy level, will emit a photon. And that's what's happening here, all right? So these electrons need to go back down to the lower energy level, because they have to be in the lowest energy level possible, so they will all emit a photon. So that the light that you are seeing in the plasma globe, the reason why the plasma globe lights up, all those wavy lines, those filaments, that is caused by the emission of uh, photons, which in turn is, is, is due to, to electrons going from the higher energy level back down to the lower energy level because of the ionisation process, which in turn is because of the, uh, the electric field and, and the high applied voltage. So that, that's really... Um, everything I can say about the, the actual underlying physics of a plasma globe. Just one last thing I can uh, tell you about are some interesting stuff you can do with a plasma globe. You can have a lot of fun with a plasma globe, and believe me, I have. Um, one of the coolest things is if you have a fluorescent bulb, essentially the, the twisty ones that you can buy, energy savers as they call them, um, if you put it near to the, the plasma globe, and because the plasma globe has that alternating magnetic field around it, um, it will actually uh, do, do a similar thing in, 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 the, uh, in the fluorescent bulb, and it will cause electrons to become excited, and then in doing so, when they go back down to that low energy level, they will emit a photon. So, if you put a fluorescent bulb next to a plasma globe, it will glow, which is good fun. Another thing that you can do, if you put a coin on the top of a plasma globe and you put a wire connected to the mains near that coin, then a spark will fly essentially to complete the circuit from the coin to the wire. That obviously can have can be a bit dangerous and have its issues, so I wouldn't recommend necessarily doing that at home unless you know what you're doing. Uh, and one last thing. Uh, which I actually discovered myself, as far as I'm aware. I mean, I Google this, and and I haven't found out, you know, known anybody else discovering this. But if if you get a battery, a permanent magnet, and put them both in, in proximity uh, to each other and and the plasma globe, then the battery will actually buzz. Um, and and I imagine that that will have something to do with the alternating magnetic field. Uh, as well, but hopefully I will put that uh, in a, in another video in a not too distant future. So I think that sums it all up in terms of the fundamental physics of the plasma globe and uh, stuff, cool stuff that you could do with it with a plasma globe. I hope you have enjoyed my video. Uh, please feel free to put a comment in below this video, and of course. Like the video and subscribe to the Chaz and Pat channel. Thank you very much.